fantasy or future? Saudi Arabia's new building design. Cheetahs are being brought back to India. Decoding your dog's wagging tail. And you won't believe what pigs do in Belgium. All this week on Newsy Palooza. Over here. Hey, 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 listen up. New, 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 Newsy. Newsy Palooza. Yes, animals are dominating the episode of Newsy Palooza this week. But in case you think that's all we've got, O M G. Have you seen the epic plans for a skyscraper city in the desert of Saudi Arabia? Hi, I'm Leela, and joining me, of course, is my sidekick, producer and mama. <laughs> hello, hello, boy! It's good to be back, isn't it? <laughs> totally. And with a bang. Super cool news and fact. Yes, we're thrilled to have made the prestigious Common Sense Media Best of Kids podcast list. Two list, in fact, the great podcast to listen to as a family. And. Fun podcast for curious kids. <laughs> We've been given the Common Sense Media Selection Badge, which is impressive. <laughs> Seriously, we put our heart and soul into Newsy Palooza, so this is so rewarding. Thank you, Common Sense Media, and thank you everyone for listening. Indeed. Now it's time for the, the big, big news, news story of the week. Straight out of a sci-fi or Marvel movie, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is planning a new futuristic megacity called Neom, right on the edge of its desert along the Red Sea, which separates the Middle East from Africa. Imagine a skyscraper taller than the Empire State Building, but get this. Over a hundred miles long, and not just one, but two of them, face to face, with bridges and pathways linking the two structures, allowing people to go back and forth, but letting in loads of sunlight and air. And did we mention that the roof of these two massive blocks is, of course, a park? <laughs> and that inside there would be loads of grassy landings, trees, and bushes everywhere. It's pretty dreamy. And so far, it is just a dream—a design that will cost one trillion dollars, as in a thousand billion dollars, to actually create. That is a lot of money. But it's meant to house nine million people. That's like the population of New York City, or half of New Delhi. But usually, cities are sprawled across miles and miles, taking up loads of land and resources. So this vertical city, appropriately called the Line, would have a teeny tiny footprint in comparison. Not only would its residents be able to travel on a high-speed underground train in 20 minutes from one end to the other, but the idea is everything a neighborhood needs—school, shops, work—could all be accessed within a five-minute walk. How cool is that? <laughs> There's no denying that this is super cool. We'll have a link to the project in our transcript, but not everyone is impressed. Firstly, there are local indigenous communities that are being moved. Secondly, Saudi Arabia isn't known for having a great record on human rights, especially for women who are given few freedoms. And did we mention that the facade or outside of the building is going to be covered in mirrors? Stunning, yes. But what about migrating birds? Ouch. <laughs> But mostly, the question is. Is the line the future or just fantasy? Many times we've seen grand plans for buildings, neighborhoods, and cities of the future, but seldom do they become a reality. They're expensive and sometimes too creative to pull off. Saudi Arabia claims the project will be ready by 2030 in just. Eight years. In eight years, some engineers say it could take almost half a century to be completed. It's the call of nature. Nature. Get on your safari suit or squeeze in into your scuba gear. gear and get ready to hop into a jeep or a submarine. Submarine. Because Mother Nature is calling. Nature. <laughs> 
Okay, listen up, dog lovers. This one is for you. Meow. Cats are the best. Now, now, Newsy Paloozy is a non-discriminatory space. We love all animals equally, Leela. I'm just kidding. Cats are the best, but I like dogs too. Right. Okay. Well, new research proves that dogs are exceptionally smart. Uh, like cats. Anyway, how smart? Continue. Thank you. Well, they seem to know how to understand humans, at least, how to interpret our intentions. For instance, researchers from the University of Veterinary Medicine in Vienna found dogs know when we're deliberately or just accidentally not giving them doggy treats. And they wag their tails to prove it. Hmm, how do they know this? Loads and loads of experiments. When researchers would pretend to be clumsy and drop food, the dogs would patiently wag their tails to the right. But when teased with treats, but not given any, the clever canines would lie down, which dogs tend to do when they're being forbidden food. In other words, the dogs knew. I guess that's pretty impressive. That's not all the barking mad news I have. The Chinese Academy of Sciences reckons they can decipher some of that tail wagging. Aha! The news thickens! <laughs> so we know dogs wag their tails to convey a range of emotions. But now scientists are going deeper. By using a 3D motion tracking system, they found dogs tend to wag their tails to the right around familiar people. But when they don't know someone, it's a left wag. But as they get to know that person better, they'll begin to wag on their right more frequently. Or they could just be saying, Hey, familiar person, you dropped my doggy treat. Come on already. Yes, or that. What's that? I'll tell you what, that's the halftime bell, which means it's time to hear what's making news around the rest of the world. Hold on tight, it's Around, around the, the World, world in, in 80, 80 Seconds. seconds. Hold tight! U.S. Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi's trip to Taiwan is causing a stir. The high-ranking Democrat met Taiwan's president despite sharp warnings from China, which considers Taiwan a breakaway territory. One of America's most wanted terrorists is killed in a CIA drone strike in Afghanistan. Ayman al-Zawahiri helped Osama bin Laden plot the deadly 9-11 attacks against America over 20 years ago. Residents of the U.S. state of Kentucky are being airlifted out of dangerous flooded areas after the region is hit by the worst flooding in decades. And the Met Office, Britain's weather service, said it's official. Sea levels in the U.K. are rising faster than they were a century ago. And the higher temperatures creating summer heat waves are the new normal. And the jacket worn by U.S. astronaut Edwin Buzz Aldrin on the historic Apollo 11 mission to the moon sells for a record $2.7 million. It was part of the most valuable auction of space exploration items ever held. As ever, thank you so much for that whippity wappity zippity zappity rap of what's making headlines elsewhere in the world, Mama. You're most welcome, Leela. Some more nature news now. Some fast news closer to home for us here in India. And when Leela says fast, she's talking about the world's fastest animal on land. The cheetah, which used to roam around India for centuries. Sadly, hunting and the loss of habitat means they've been extinct for some 70 years. But not any longer. As our new Delhi correspondent, Yuvraj Sani, is about to tell us. Take it away, Yuvraj. Thanks, Leela. Cheetahs, the fastest animal on land, can run up to 70 miles an hour. The sleek wildcat used to roam from the Saharan Desert in Africa across the Middle East to India. But as human populations grew, the Asiatic cheetah began to lose its natural habitat. And they were hunted down by poachers. Never mind 
that they were also vulnerable to diseases. There hasn't been a cheetah in India since 1952. Well, now they're being brought back. Okay, not the actual Asiatic cheetahs. There are only a few of those left and they're in Iran. But eight African cheetahs from Nambia are heading this way. Soon the fast spotted cat will roam freely at a nature park in the state of Madhya Pradesh in effort to reintroduce the animal to their natural habitat. They are considered a vital part of India's ecosystem as well as its heritage. In New Delhi, I am Yuvraj Sani reporting for Newsy Puluzi. Great news! Thanks a lot, Yuvraj. So, Mama, if the cheetah is the fastest animal on land, what's the fastest fish? Well, the sailfish, called that because of its massive top fin that looks like a sail, cruises through the water at 68 miles an hour. But the black marlins have been clocked at 80 miles per hour. And I thought I swam fast. Well, there you go. Thanks, Mama. Anytime. And finally, let's see what the Lucky Dip Machine has in store for us this week. Step right up, step right up, step right up. Right up. Go the Lucky Dip, dip Machine. The Lucky Dip Machine. What's it going, What's to, it going to be today, eh? An oddball, no doubt. An oddball, no doubt. In the centre of Europe, in the country of Belgium, there's a new twist to this nursery rhyme. First little piggy went to the market. Second little piggy stayed home. Third little piggy ate roast beef. The fourth little piggy had none. And the last little piggy went... Dancing all the way home. Wait. What? Don't kill the music, Mama. This is what one Belgium farmer says all his pigs do. Dance! It all started when Pete Peasman's son was singing in their barn. As he sang, Farmer Pete saw his pigs wiggling their tails. No, this is not a porky pie, as the British like to call lies. Soon the farmer began to play recorded music. No offense to his son singing. And found, surprise, surprise, when really peppy music was played, not only did the piggies wag their tails, but they started moving and frolicking around. Apparently rock music, however, was a bit of a bore. Get it? <laughs> and before you think all this dancing made them sweat like pigs, that's a crazy phrase as pigs don't actually have sweat glands. Did you know? Now scientists are getting in on the piggy playlist to determine if it's just Pete's pigs or all swine who like to swing. And it's time to wrap up the podcast with the the top top five facts facts heard today. today. Fab fact number one. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is planning a new futuristic megacity called Neom, right in the middle of its desert, which is near what body of water which separates the Middle East from Africa? The Red Sea. Fab fact number two. New doggy news shows clever canines can interpret human intentions. What is the known doggy trait for conveying a range of emotions? Wagging their tails to the right if they're around familiar people, in fact. Fab fact number three. Cheetahs are returning to India for the first time in more than 70 years. Cheetahs are the fastest animals on land. How fast can they run? 70 miles per hour. Fab fact number four. And what's the fastest fish? Black marlins have been clocked at 80 miles per hour. Fab fact number five. 
A farmer in Belgium finds his pigs like to wiggle their tails and dance to peppy music, but why don't they sweat like pigs? Pigs don't have sweat glands. And don't forget, if you want to test yourself later on, then go to the Lucky Dip page of our website, newsypoolusy.com, and take this quiz online in your own time. <laughs> And that brings us to the end of this episode of Newsy Paloozy. Boy, it's good to be back to weekly news. If you enjoyed this dip in the coolest pool of news and information, then do subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Alexa, or wherever you get your podcasts. And why not tell a friend or even a teacher about us and our selection badge of honor from Common Sense Media. You can find out more about us on our website, newsypalooze.com. That's Palooze as in a pool of news. P-O-O-L-O-O-Z-I dot com. I repeat, P-O-O-L-O-O-Z-I dot com. <laughs> oh, I've missed Robot. <laughs> Alrighty then. See you next week in the happy, splashy giant, Newsy Paloozy, <laughs> where Robot Leela will take over your brain. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> Decoding your tail's wagging tail. Decatting your. <laughs> <laughs> Decatting your dog's tail. I said decatting your wagging tail. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>